the Casprotone and the Geosynth MIPS, two premium high-end helmets but with quite a lot of difference. So to get the fundamentals out of the way, the Protone weighs 260 grams and costs 175 pounds or $300, while the Synth weighs 285 grams, costs 225 pounds or 270 US dollars. Starting with the Protone and its fit, it actually sits quite far down on your head, more so than any other helmet that I've used and this goes for the retention system as well. It sits quite far down on the base of the skull. This gives an odd feeling that because of the amount of contact that's on your head and on the base of your skull, it just gives the illusion that it's heavier, even though it's actually lighter than the synth. The retention system, I'd have to say, is probably the best I've ever used on any helmet, just because it feels so secure and it's very highly adjustable. There is one slight flaw with it that, that really quite annoyed me. On each side of the retention system, there is a strap holder, and that's covered by a pad. Towards the end of every ride, the strap would work its way out to the point where it knocked one of the padding off and it's gone completely. The chin strap is equally as comfortable as the retention system. You don't notice it on any ride. There's no harsh rubbing or, or irritation. And where the straps meet under the ear, there's no folding. It's just a very solid system that doesn't irritate you or you I think the best way to explain it is, because you don't notice it, it works very, very well. With sunglasses in the vents, I found that I actually have to put the sunglasses upside down for better fit than you would sort of regularly. This isn't so much of a problem, but it can be a little awkward when you're, you're riding along, you have to flip the sunglasses and sort of try and fiddle, fiddle your way in. Even though the cask is part of this new semi-aero helmet category, I haven't really found any problems with overheating or actually being too cold. I've ridden the helmet through the UK winter months almost every day. I've also ridden it in some pretty hot Majorcan weather and I never had any problems with overheating. The style is obviously very personal, but what Cask have done is they've released so many different colour variations that you're almost certain to find something that's going to either match your kit or your bike. The obvious thing that the Protone doesn't have is MIPS, so if you've already bought into that new system, then you might be a little disappointed. Moving on to the Giro Synth MIPS, the obvious addition is the MIPS. If you don't know what MIPS is, it's a liner that goes in between the shell of the helmet and the skeleton that makes up the retention system. And the idea behind this is it's designed to stop what is called oblique rotational forces in the, sort of, the unfortunate event of a crash. The retention system on the Giro is not as highly adjustable as on the Protone. The retention system doesn't sit as far down on the base of the skull. The synth is actually 25 grams heavier than the Protone, but because of the reduced contact area, you just don't get this feeling. There's considerably less padding. There's, there's only really two pads, but this doesn't add any discomfort. The MIPS liner, I can't verify this, but our US colleague, Ben Delaney, he said that the MIPS liner made him go from the medium up to a large. And this is just another consideration. The straps on the synth are, I'd say, equally as comfortable as they are on the Protone, even though they're a completely different material. The straps under the ear are actually adjustable compared to the Protone, which is a fixed point. The fit of sunglasses in the dedicated vents are brilliant once they're in. It's just a little bit trickier to find the vents because they're smaller than on the Protone, but once they're in they feel very secure and you're not going to need to worry about them ever falling out on bumpy roads. So the synth is also part of this new semi-aero helmet trend. And whilst I haven't actually had the chance to ride it in some pretty hot conditions, other colleagues have and they've pretty much all unanimously agreed that it's very, very good for ventilation. These are both premium helmets, proven at world tour level. And if you like the look of them, then really what it comes down to is fit. Because of the secure fit, if I had to spend my own money, it would have to be the Casper Tone.